Hi everyone, my name is Dmitry Karpov. I'm a co-founder and chief innovation officer of Electronic Robotics. You're about to watch the key highlights from our fall 2020 community event, brought in partnership with Sage, a global leading vendor of accounting software. The theme of our community event is accounting bots. Whether you work in accounting or have clients in accounting, I hope you will find this content useful because the speakers we have today are exactly those who drive the change in the industry. If you don't work in accounting, I hope you'll find this content still useful because you can see how technologies and their applications create strategic advantages in certain businesses, and you can find analogies to whatever you do. So let's dive into the speaker's intro. Today, we're going to hear from three speakers, including myself. I will be talking about how accelerated delivery of services enabled by RPA creates strategic advantages in accounting business. Raphael Cassis, senior manager from Sage and one of the biggest evangelists of RPA in the field of accounting, will share his vendor perspective of how accounting software and bots coexist together. Dave Pala, one of the most experienced consultants in automation of accounting firms, is going to share his cases, stories, and models of what works and doesn't when the firms start their automation journey. Before we get started, let me say a big thank you to mostly a thousand people with whom we connected during this event, to everyone who attended the streaming, to you who are watching this video, and to all electronic partners and clients who made it. Thank you for your support. Let's go. So the topic I'm going to talk to today is very simple. And actually it's the shortest presentation name I ever had in my career. It's X2, which means increased twice accounting bots. So what does it mean? And why I named my talk like this? So accounting bots, let's for a, for a second imagine that we don't know what's that, something, some new technology in accounting space. I want to show you the graph that I hope at least will spark your curiosity about what's so important and what's changing in this particular, um, with this particular search term. Here you can see a screenshot of Google Trends showing you the last five years of search queries related to accounting RPA. And I will tell you that RPA itself is this kind of term, so it's very narrow search. Of course, if we think about automation accounting, the search will be much bigger, likely we'll have different dynamics. So here we're talking about specific search queries where people are looking for how to implement RPA in accounting, in accounting processes, with accounting software, in accounting industry, and so on. What you can see on this graph is first, over time, the frequency of interest peaks increases, which means that in the past, the interest in this topic was driven mostly by publications and media, uh, maybe by some you know, white papers, some new vendors coming to the market, some events. So it was, let's call it seasonal. Maybe it's not related to the busy season, but the interest was seasonal. We can see as we progress from left side to the right side of the slide, the interest peaks become much more frequent, which means if you work with Google Trends, it's pretty much have stable interest. What's very interesting, around start of this year, that interest went significantly up, actually roughly twice. And that is why I called my talk X2. There could be different speculations of why that happened and they're going to, to, to dive deep a bit into what could be the reasons. But the fact is, this topic is now as twice more interesting as it was last year. So let's just accept it and dive deep. So what is RPA? We have 17% of audience who never, you know, probably have experience with RPA. RPA stands for Robotic Process Automation. It's a software that imitates user actions in different computer systems. When it works, it pretty much does the same work as humans do following instructions or rules or code. So you program something to imitate work of humans in software and it's software itself. We essentially tell computer what to do without human intervention or to do some work then human steps in, another work is done, human steps in. When you can think about that from business perspective, that's essentially having a virtual workforce, digital workforce. What does it mean? The easiest analogy 
it's invisible human working at the computer with mouse and keyboard. And you just give some tasks to the person and the person completes the tasks. Easy. In IT, that is known a bit differently. You don't need to have any analogies there. It's a script that works on no API graphic user interface level. So for those of you who work in IT, think about no API automation or automation on the level of graphic user interface. That's pretty much enough today for you to know um, what is RPA and what's digital workforce. We're going to talk about why it is so important. And probably the key takeaway here from what the technology, technology works should be that these bots work extremely fast. They work at the speed of computer systems. And on the next slide, you will see a GIF that will show you how a real bot works in real time. Just log it into the Sage uh, cloud system, navigates the interface, goes to chart of accounts, and starts completely creating new accounts there. What you can see on your screen is a real time recording of the bot executing the work. As you can see, it works much, much faster. You know, 10 times, 25 times. That depends on the task. For complex things could be 100x time faster. That's everything you need to know. So let's talk about banking. I think accountants can learn from, learn from bankers a lot uh, and understand why automation like RPA is a strategic capability for anyone who's playing in the accounting field. Let me explain. Banks are the biggest adopters of RPA globally. Actual RPA started in banking. Long time ago when I worked on Ernst & Young, uh, we pretty much helped largest banks to implement uh, RPA on accounts payable and many other processes. And I think Goldman is a great example. Their CIO is very progressive there. They pretty much shortened the IPO cycle by automating a lot of backend operations. So for banks, RPA is not a new story. It was all about time savings, mostly time savings. So great ROI, nothing really that strategic. Let's take a look what changed this year. So PPP loans. I know many of you know that around 10% of PPP loans have been processed by RPA. It means that you need a lot of information to process. It's a lot of manual operations. And many banks quickly realized that in PPP way of thinking, earlier you apply for the loan, higher chance you get it, first come, first serve basis. So when you offer someone to process a loan application, you can emphasize the speed with which you can do that work. And that becomes a competitive advantage. So 10% of the loans in the United States have been processed by loan applications, have been processed by RPA. And then, as many of you know, SBA and Treasury, they banned the use of RPA to submit loans. And the reason, because they were crushing the application system. There are some speculations where there was kind of looking unfair advantages of some banks that they had with RPA, but it really comes down to IT. Banks that adopted RPA accelerated that much that their government system wasn't able to process the applications with that speed. So it was a short period of time that demonstrated that if you can do the work much quicker than your competitor, that could become why clients go to you, not to your competitor, or could be vice versa. So when we talk about how you make money with bots, it doesn't mean you save or you know, pretty much you have digital workforce, they work for you, so you make money. The traditional way of thinking is time savings. Time savings minus technology costs and development costs. If Delta is positive, you have positive ROI on investment, you automate. But this is a 101. In strategic, from strategic perspective, RPA can give you two, two advantages that are hard to beat. And they all come from the accelerated delivery, accelerated execution of processes over computer. So where the two angles could come. First one, how quickly you can deliver versus your top competitor. It's pretty much the story of PPP loans. Second one, how well you can scale your ability to deliver when you have taken a workload. So it's fall 2020, uh, 2021 is ahead. There will be fiscal stimulus. There will be tax stimulus. There will be a lot of things, I think, that 
will impact accounting processes that will impact the types of services and, and actually services we offer, we offer to the clients. There will be opportunities to capture a lot of clients for that specific services if you can offer them, if you can deliver them quicker, but also if you have this capacity to scale. And it's very hard to scale with people, as you know, the hiring process and so on. Currently, there is one industry that is dying from uh, kind of challenges in hiring. This industry is uh, mortgaging, is mortgages. Currently, there is, I think, one professional in mortgage space for hundreds of open positions. So when it's time to scale, digital workforce, to scale that, we do double click. With real people, you need to hire. So it's not about replacing people with bots. That's about creating a system where bots and humans can scale together to deliver things in an agile and flexible way. So if you represent an account industry and you are an executive or a business owner in this industry, think about this. We have a few tips for you as you decide, if you decide to move with automating, I think after hearing the banking story, your likelihood of following this path increased. So focus on type of automation that is called attended. That's where CPAs and bots work together and bots pretty much stop at certain moment to ask a human for input. That could be a confirmation, you complete the review, um, you can confirm individual documents, individual charts, could, could pretty much do reconciliation process, but it's not you, it's not you creating a backend process to you know, process some huge bulk job on the backend. For example, scanning 20,000 documents and creating large Excel file from them. It's more about giving every employee an opportunity to have a macro on steroids on their computer. When they know that certain job needs to be done, they have all the inputs, but instead of doing that work manually, they double click on the bot and the bot uh, does the job for them. They just need to release their hands for a few minutes from a computer. We think that due to the nature of processes and existing IT infrastructure that we see at our clients, attended automation has much higher potential than um, focusing on identifying a few centralized impactful processes that actually many organizations don't have due to their size or uh, due to the way they, they work in the business. As you know, even largest professional services firms are decentralized in many ways. So equip every team or ideally every employee with the bots, with bots that can do the hard work quicker. Second one, it kind of comes from the first. Don't think about building one killer bot that will do all your manual work at once overnight. No, these bots typically will require certain proficiency in development, in coding, in the virtual infrastructure, in administering the back end of that. Of course, if you have strong IT capability, or you want to invest in building very strong RPA capability, you would be able to do that. Or you will, you will eventually get there anyway. But to start, maybe for the first year, think about small but many bots. It's much easier from structure perspective. You can train your employees to build short, small bots. Um, then you can have a few, let's say, champion or super users who would be able to build more complex things. But the ability to build small bots and run them in meaningful way, that's something that is affordable to organization of any size. And it doesn't matter whether you actually have a lot of IT workforce or you just have someone who works with you on freelance or outsource. There are multiple ways to start in-house, out-house, uh, the third party. But think about this, bots and humans working together, a lot of small bots rather than a few big bots. What electronic as one of emerging leaders in RPA space has to offer to accounting industry. And actually why Electronique is focused on accounting industry? Because we think there's a great match. Our vision is that there should be a lot of attended bots. And we developed a product to make creation of these bots, attended bots, very, very easy. We work with unattended bots as well. We have orchestrator and for those who you know RPA, uh, we have an ecosystem of products to support any kind of automation, but where we focus our strongest technology uh, and innovation investment, that's a front end development of attended automation. So it's low barrier to use because it's designed for relatively low skilled people to do. 
It has award winning UX, quick training, free training available online, and the value. You now, you're in the industry that is top on margins, and part of, this, part of this pressure actually comes from the technology. So, unlike we all came, all founders of this company came from big RPA business, and we realized that in order for RPA to scale, everything about it should be very different, and the business model should be different. It should be very close to a traditional IT model where someone buys a tool to create things. That's their investment. Then they create bots and how these bots are used. Do they need licenses? How they deploy it? And then that way, no one should care. We are in the business of selling instruments to creators and our instrument costs only $400 a month. Uh, we essentially drop down the cost of RPE from hundreds of thousands to you know, dozens. And that's what our clients like about us. And that's why you can see here a logo of our recent client who signed up with this with us, I think in the end of Q2 this year. So there are three months in a journey, they're scaling, it's BDO. Apparently their vision of attendant automation matches with ours and we want to expand our partnership. FII, we work in some capacity, in some another form with all big four companies. So if you work in big four, just, you know, let us know uh, if you have interest in starting with us. We can connect you with someone in your company who already uses the product. So that's the probably simplest way for the big firm to start. So let's go back to the definition of digital workforce. Let's take a look at the business, business owner or business executive or manager perspective into that. Forget about IT and bots for a second. RPA is about creating a digital workforce, something I mentioned before, and uh, we haven't created the industry. The industry created a digital workforce. What we changed in the industry, our biggest, one of the biggest innovation, we led that workforce to be free. We unbundled bots from any kind of IT infrastructure or we unbundled, and we unbundled that from any kind of licensing. So you can build the bot on your home computer, use it at work vice versa, can build a bot for your friend in another company. Uh, because the bots built in Electronic Studio, they're kind of free to leave on any desktop, whatever they do. So it brought a lot of attention to us. We, uh, since last quarter, it's because it's a quarterly event, I will give a few updates, we uh, got into Everest Peak uh, Metrics. We are probably the top aspirant and the youngest company in the field there, the youngest among top 15, 20 players of RPA globally. Uh, we have Gardner, uh, Gardner's Captera awarding us the best ease of use uh, this summer. And Forrester recently published an article on seven innovations in the RPA space. And uh, uh, if you have access to that, please take, take a look at how they uh, spotlighted us. So one more announcement today. Uh, we are just probably to demonstrate how important accounting industry for us. And actually, I think we are the only one vendor who really emphasizes that. We are partnering with Realize Community and Realize Community Find, there are Jason Stats, one of the top accounting technologists in the US, um, recorded a small video for us to address what he's doing. Let me just reshare my screen. Hi, Jason here, founder of Realize the Accountant Community. Realize's foremost ambition is to enable accountants with tech. I'm really excited today to announce a collaboration between the Realize Community and Electronique. Realize is a place where accountants come together to build tools that everyone can benefit from. And I can't think of a better application of that than RPA. We're just scratching the surface of what RPA can do for our profession but it still feels just out of reach for a lot of accountants. So I'm very excited to explore what our community can build in partnership with Electronique. Why Electronique specifically? Two reasons. I chose Electronique because they're the only RPA vendor coming down market to small business owners like myself, and they're even looking specifically at the accounting industry. They're not just focused on enterprise, they understand small business problems, and those are my problems. Secondly, I can do it in a way that doesn't break the bank. I'm paying for a developer seat and unlimited bots. So I'm not up against these arbitrary pricing limitations. I don't have to do that incremental mental math every time I need another bot for this other thing. It's simple and I appreciate that. I think it plays well into the small business mindset. 
So we are just getting started as a professional with RPA. If you're an accountant exploring what RPA can do for you, check out realizerlz.io where there's a whole bunch of other accountants just like you that are starting to build really cool stuff. So thank you to Electronique. Looking forward to seeing what the community can build with Electronique. Thank you, Jason. Unfortunately, Jason wasn't able to join us today for the personal reasons, but we miss him as a panelist. Uh, let me share my screen again. Okay, so realize for us this collaboration is very important. They're going to start, I would say, intense deep dive into RPA soon. So if you if it's an interest for you and you want to collaborate with other CPAs who are exploring the topic, feel free to sign up. And one more thing. So that's the end of my talk. And I want to finish that with uh, our accounting pioneer, RPA pioneer program. So for those of you who work with us, you know that every month we select an industry or for two months, mm -hmm. and we really try to create a fast track for companies in these industries to get up to speed with RPA. Historically, we offered one month of our premium bot support building service called premium care. What it is, it's something very unique for the market that's a support service that is not related to the product. It's related to helping you build in bots. For example, you have a question on, I want to you know, take data from PDF into web form, or I want to take data to my legacy tech system or my project management system. And uh, you ask the question, you get a guidance on how to connect the dots, what functions to use, how to put the bots together. You can do you know, QA work for you and so on. So we had historically one month of the premium services. We typically charge clients for that around 3,400 a month. So this year we decided that, you know, with accounting, after we started to work in this space early summer, we've seen that companies take a bit more time. So we decided to extend this offer to two months of free bot support service. And essentially the program will start in December. The applications, the qualifications will start this Monday, November 15th. Mm -hmm. If you want to apply for that, please, reach out to my colleague, George, until this Friday, or Sage customers, go to the Sage page on electronic.com, realize members exist in the future, go to realize page on electronic.com, sign up there, indicate your interest, connect next week for the qualification. You will learn a lot about the kind of details and what are the requirements. Uh, we definitely want you to have an IT professional on board who will be working with the tool, or at least someone who will commit to the number of hours of working with the tool, uh, become our client December 1st, your journey starts. You will have your first bot ready by the end of December or, or by the end of January. Um, I think that building the first bot for most companies is like the biggest barrier to start. Once you did it, it starts to fly. So would we'll be welcome to see a big class of accounting professionals uh, joining our PAP and your program that starts off on December 1st. So that's the end of my part. We'll get back on the questions. And now I want to transition the microphone and the camera to my good friend, Rafael Casas, one of the biggest, I think, evangelists of RPA in accounting profession in the United States. I'm very glad we are connected. I'm very glad that Electronic and Sage partnered together to increase adoption of this technology. I think Rafael has a lot of insights and uh, Rafael works in big vendor who can see pretty much everything in the market. So it's a big pleasure for us to work together and Rafael, your turn. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dimitri, for having us here. We really appreciate it. You and the partnership. I also want to make sure to, uh, seeing that's the Veterans Day today, we also want to make give a big thank you to all the vet veterans that are on this call or that may be listening afterwards. We appreciate you and we thank you for your time and service and being here. Um, so we're actually going to talk about accounting software and robots working together from a vendor perspective, my name is Rafael Casas. Again, thank you, Dimitri, for the introduction. I'm the senior manager of the Stage Account Solutions Group for the United States. And so we're going to kind of dive in deep here on some of the areas that are really important, not only from a vendor perspective, but um, what to kind of look at from a holistic perspective and mental perspective when you're looking at bots and the automation and RPA that can come out of that. So let's move into the next slide here. So we're going to look at a couple, a few key things, automation, the key accounting technology trends, three points that you see upon this, why accounts can help but automate, digital workforce versus employees, battle or alliance, 
rise of machines for the sake of human creativity. So we're going to kind of dig deep and unpack what this actually means because there's, these are actually challenges and also what opportunities come from this. An interesting uh, editorial that just came out, the World Economic Forum really puts out a future of jobs report every so often. And in this year's 2020 report that just came out in October, it's filled with all kinds of insights uh, as well as how jobs are trending leading up to 2025. One chart was quite interesting and it lists the top 20 jobs that are increasing in demand and the top 20 that are most likely going to become redundant by 2025. And interestingly enough, top 15 decreasing demands in the report are accountants and bookkeepers. And alternatively, top 15 increasing demands is strategic advisors and process automation specialists. So one key thing to think about is that automation is not about bots taking over anyone's jobs. It's about empowering your employees to focus on more revenue generating tasks, such as being strategic advisors and allowing more human touch points with your clients. So this is really, really important. But another recent study that came out during the pandemic was discussing how businesses that are not looking, you know, the small businesses and medium-sized businesses during the pandemic weren't looking for work from their CPAs around regulatory or compliance tax work. They were looking more for strategic advisors, someone to keep their business healthy financially, looking at runway, looking at forecasting. And that's where, you know, the accounts and CPAs are really able to to build out a much more strategic and high business value, not just from a quantitative business value, but from, from when you automate and build out bots or deploy bots and automate bots within your firm, what do you, what's next? What's the next step? It's redefining jobs. And so the, it's not, it's 50% technology and 50% empowerment and culture. And that's where you're really going to find that it's a beautiful partnership when we really look towards that and you don't look towards just pushing some sort of technology or automation, you have to share a much larger vision. So what we thought within those trends, that's how we, you, can, you can really facilitate these, these hard trends that have been actually in the accounting industry the past five years, this has been one of the top three trends, hard trends within the accounting industry, RPA, blockchain, and then you, you have other things like crypto. But uh, this is something that you really want to think about of the empowerment that comes with a lot of training, that comes with a lot of um, building a center of excellence within your group within your firm to be able to evangelize and finding the right stakeholders that are going to be potentially involved in making this a success. So then we move into the next talking point. We're looking at automation outcomes. Uh, three points here, accelerating digital transformation, accelerated trans transition to SaaS, cloud integrations. The future is in the connectivity and centralization. So really business value outcomes with automation allows for your organization to focus on three key things, people, process, and technology. This allows you to think holistically on scalability and stability of your systems and your culture as you're growing. You know, this not only looks at, you know, if you're moving into SaaS products and you're moving into uh, that cloud integration, those connectivity, you're looking at <clears throat> making sure that you have proper feature le release management, governance in your in your system in your uh, your firm. So these are all things that are going to be stable and scalable. And this is where automation comes into play and gives you that true business value. Bef before we move on to the next piece, there was a McKinsey article that I, I generally talk about quite a bit. And according to this analysis, there are fewer than five percent of occupations can be entirely automated using current technology. However, about 60% of occupations could have 30% or more of their constituent activities automated. And automation is likely to change the vast majority of occupations, at least to some degree, which will necessitate job significant redefinition and transformation of business processes. Accountants will spend less time in audit tax and bookkeeping and more time advising clients and having that human touch factor so this is really important because you're this also goes with culture of, of of actually skilling up your current employees but also allows you for new uh, for attracting new employees or new staff into your business from coming out of 
out of college or university that they see that your firm is innovative, not just in technology, but in culture and mindset. And this is all part uh, in play of allowing you to be able to do that and being the best uh, firm that you can be. So these are, these are some really great tangible outcomes that you'll be able to receive out of this technology. So as we move into the next area of even modern IT infrastructure can be troublesome. This is, you know, a huge, huge area in a technology circle that I was just in specifically with IT and CIOs. Several points to think about here is lack of connectivity among multiple ecosystems, lack of flexibility, abundance, abundance of legacy software. These all are really um, going to disallow you from scaling your business. That's why all CIOs are, and all directors of IT are looking to move into cloud, deep integrations, whether it be Microsoft Teams, the Microsoft 365, anywhere that they can have a metadata that, that are, uh, that's going to allow them to scale. There was actually a, you know, a, a, another benchmark and report by a connectivity benchmark, benchmark report by CIOs raised to transform. They revealed that three out of four organizations expect a negative revenue impact if they don't complete their digital transformation initiatives in the next 12 months. In addition, more than half of respondents say their IT budgets will increase by less than 10% while their project workloads are projected to skyrocket to 40%. To complete their transformation, CIOs need to look at new tools and strategies that can help close the delivery gap. And this is where automation and RPA is extremely valuable to those outcomes. Again, processes, shifting IT's role from maintenance towards a business enabler. This is where it's not just gonna be business enablement to staff members or different parts of your firm, uh, but it's also going to be business enablement to your IT role. Once organizations understand the values of RPA or APIs and then locking data across the organization, they can begin implementing clear processes that drive RPA or API use. While 80% of organizations are using public or private APIs, only 12% are mandated by leadership to abide by company-wide API integration strategies for all their products. More than half implement APIs RPAs and project by project based to use a strategy that's siloed within parts of businesses. So this is just telling you that they are looking for more creative ways uh, and creative ways that don't break the bank and that are scalable uh, and as well as are cost effective and are actually looking for low code, no code enablement. And this is why electronic is, electronic is so amazing at that. This is the, the type of path that you want to take and that a lot of larger technology firms are taking low code, no code. So that means that you don't need a ton of developers. You have the ability to um, have staff trained up and be able to make adjustments and pivot quickly when necessary. So as we move into some of the manual tasks, there's so many that CAPA has suffered from. Some basic ones here, of onboarding client data, transforming, trans, uh, importing and transforming data across systems, Reporting, those go kind of hand in hand when you're talking about some of the smaller business systems that don't have the ability to do, for instance, intercompany transactions or elimination transactions or, or even deep level of um, consolidated reporting. So these are things that you want to think about where RPA can, these are manual tasks that take a long time. And then you have data checks and reconciliations. This is where bots can really help you with the integrity of that. Uh, but again, it comes back to yeah, the Pareto rule of having, putting 80% of your time on the business improvement process and building out a great process because none of these technologies are going to work well if you don't really put the time in to make sure these business processes are redefined, they're solidified, they're improved, and then you build out automation and RPAs on top of that. So as we move into how our, we're going to move into the next piece of how RPAs takes off uh, the takes off the burden from CPAs. It, you know, you see here the quicker with uh, with the close to zero percent error rate at lower cost. You know, ultimately this is going to really help you reduce human intervention. It's going it to has the ability to complete monotonous and mundane tasks while keeping control of workflows and governance within the business within your firm. RPA ultimately is going to enable better better, better data integrity, removing human errors where possible. This is all really important as you are working with, you know, 
structured data. And then you also get into the point of working with unstructured data, where that is where the cognitive, cognitive or hyper automation can take in place and really help you out with that. Because as, as many firms or many businesses have, the migration, uh, there was not the migration, but the merger and acquisitions, that's really important to helping to do that. But ultimately, the burden is really that you, you must not come from fear with any of these technologies. You have to treat this no different than any, any other IT project that you've worked on. It's a long-term investment to see the ROI. The RPA implementations are generally pretty straightforward as well. If you have a clear and detailed roadmap, if you have the right stakeholders in a center of excellence within your business or IT, um, you can really deploy RPA pods and I've seen up to less than two months at much more cost of effective ways as well. You know, most this includes time to configure, test, and launch RPA bots into production. So these are things that you want to think about that are scalable. And again, with the low code, no code movement that are actually pivotable and adjustable quickly, as opposed to kind of re-engineering APIs on the back end with the developer. So these are all areas of value that you not only bring internally, but you bring that additional value externally to your clients and your customers and constituents. Uh, so these are things that you want to think about the high level value that it will be bringing. And so as we move into the future of RPA and accounting, future really isn't bigger data. More data means more processing work. IT infrastructure needs to be flexible and inter interconnected. Really, this is all going to revolve around the future of how do I serve my clients and my customers better from an advisory standpoint? I have to be able to manage bigger data. I have to be able to manage all the process working uh, from an automated backend. This could be from attendant bots, unattended bots to the bigger data of unstructured data for cognitive bots. So there's different levels that you need to kind of really define where you're at within your business because every one of these firms, every firm is in a different area. And so it's important to just be be very honest of where you are and start small and start incrementally. And that's something that you definitely want to just make sure that you're putting in place because you don't want to get to a position where you're trying to go too fast. And then it becomes having adverse issues within your firm because you're trying to move too fast. Take it slow. Make sure you do really well with those proof of concepts to be able to take on these bigger, more complex RPA and automation processes. And so with that, I just want to get into the last piece with regards to our last slide here, um, which is going to really be revolving around RPA as a strategic capability within your accounting operational and excellence plan. And I think one way to do that is really there's a mother load of all questions that I talk about. And, uh, and I, I, it's a question I generally ask customers and consultants alike that I mentor. This is really a variant of a question posed by Peter Block, and it's a ponderable question for partners, clients, and customers to think about. The question is, what is the question that if you had the answer would make you free? And again, this is a ponderable question because what this means is what this does is it, it, it spurs additional questions. It starts making customers in your business and your IT team starts thinking outside the box and thinking differently about the visions and the and the roadmaps that they've built out for their for your business. And it's an important question to always ask yourself and always ask ourselves. And you can have different variants of, variances of this, but it really starts to help you think better and more holistically as to how this is strategic in my business and in my firm and how it's going to add value at the top line revenue area uh, of, of a firm. So these are all things that you want to think about where it's the technology and the culture are all strategically equally important. So with that, I wanna thank you so much for having me here today. We appreciate your time. We appreciate the partnership and uh, I'm gonna hand it over to Dimitri. Thank you so much. I think you may be on mute there. You may be on mute, Dimitri. There you go. All right, thank you, Rafael. Thank you for spotting that. Uh, truly enjoyed your talk. Thank you. I always find it's very insightful. And uh, this was a good one. So the next speaker we have is Dave Pala, the owner and CEO of Digital Leave Solutions. And Dave, uh, actually Raphael introduced Dave to us when 
I came to Rafael early summer and said that, you know, we see the demand from consulting com or from accounting companies and some of them, maybe 40% don't have experienced developers or IT or for any other reason decide that they want to start working with a consultant firm to make, to help them make the first steps in RPA and ask you, could you connect me with, in your opinion, the best consultant in the space who already works with Sage products, understands accounting specifics and so on. That's how I got introduced to Dave. And um, over time, Dave not only became our trusted partner, but he also became our client. And uh, when we just started this model where we decoupled the bots from the rest of the, of the IT tools and said bots are free, it opened the way that essentially Dave can build the bots for you and you don't need to pay for the technology cost. And that's very kind of, it's turning the market upside down. We're still looking at where that's heading directionally. But we essentially were the only one on offer with, who can work with the only one vendor who can work with this new generation of consultants like Dave to completely remove their automation costs from clients. Okay, Dave, it's your turn. I know you had some troubles with camera, so I'm turning off mine, going on mute, go. Thank you, thank you, Dimitri. Uh, I want to start with one of the misconceptions uh, that is in the industry. Uh, many people think robotic process automation is limited to deploying uh, a bot or a robot, one or two robots and working in silos, which is wrong. Uh, robotic process automation is a strategic decision any organization can make, you know, uh, to bring the digital workforce into uh, the, their operating model. So what does a robotic process or RPA strategy look like or what does it involve? It involves uh, coming up with a clear roadmap uh, which is linked to your business objective, identification of the process, doing a detailed discovery and analysis and assessment of feasibility, then uh, looking at whether it is a good fit for auto automation or not. And the last two uh, steps are very important and need special attention. Uh, coming up with an implementation plan, which is sustainable and scalable in future. And most importantly, maintenance and monitoring of the robots. So this comprises the strategy, or the complete strategy of RPA. And this is exactly where our consulting companies like us fit in to help organizations to come up with a clear uh, approach, a phased approach uh, for successful RPA implementations. Uh, next slide, please. So let's look at uh, what does a typical RPA life cycle looks like? You know, uh, it starts with uh, business process identification and doing a uh, detailed process discovery and analysis that includes exception handling and everything. And then coming up with uh, solution design. Uh, when I say solution design, it can be a replica of Aziz process or sometimes it can be a process redesign. Uh, uh, because most of the processes uh, need value and no value analysis because, uh, for one of for for the reasons uh, uh, you know uh, some of the standard operating procedures which you guys are using might be uh, drafted way long back and may not be relevant at this point so that's where we come up with a detailed analysis on what is value adding and non value adding task in this process and can we knock off or can we do a slight reengineering the fourth step is an optional step. We can start with a proof of concept uh, to see the capability and see how it can scale in future and followed by the bot development and maintenance and uh, deployment and then maintenance and monitoring of robots. While this looks like a typical RPA life cycle, uh, uh, one of the key factors that our customers find it flexible working with us is uh, we can fit in uh, anywhere in the life cycle. So we have handled projects right from inception stage, that is defining the strategy and complete roadmap till deployment and maintenance. Or, and we have also handled projects where we do only the fifth step or fourth and fifth step for our clients where they take care of uh, you know, the other steps in the RPA life cycle. So uh, with, with the experience of uh, deploying more than uh, 100 robots across multiple organizations, we know exactly the right way of doing an implementation, especially the RPA implementation, and uh, we can also bring in uh, industry best practices for a successful implementation. And, and uh, the most important point is our partnership with Electronic, which we always cherish. Uh, Electronics, the journey has been smooth and uh, uh, very productive. Uh, 
with their innovative pricing model. By the way, uh, electronic as an innovative model in the industry, in the RP industry, where you uh, studio as a product is uh, the component which you get when you get the license and you can develop unlimited robots. Or the other way around, uh, we can handle the license cost as a consulting company and we deliver a robotic process automation solutions as a package solution for you guys. Next slide, please. Okay, our partnership with Sage, I have been associated with Sage for almost, uh, or Sage product lines with almost, uh, for almost uh, six to seven years. Uh, that's where uh, this comes from. Some of the, uh, we partnered with some of the channel partners or the business Sage business partners to bring in automation into their accounting space and their customers. Uh, we picked, uh, we started with the low hanging fruits on the finance and accounting side, uh, uh, specifically on procure to pay, order to cash and uh, reconciliation, account reconciliation processes. But this is not the, uh, this is not the only processes which we are automating. We scaled our operations or we scaled our automations to handle supplier onboarding, vendor onboarding and customer onboarding and handling sales order automatically in, uh, Sage, uh, uh products and, uh, and the other processes which are where there is a huge amount of manual entry and data entry works related. Uh, in short, uh, we are just building a digital ecosystem where humans and robots can work together and uh, uh, get the ROI what they were looking for. Yes, please. Next slide. Okay. On the benefits, uh, while while the slide shows uh, only the tangible benefits which we were able to realize or which we were we were able to capture there are other benefits intangible benefits uh, which we noticed after we did a successful rpa implementation some of them are uh, the positive impact on the employees and other stakeholders when robots started handling most of their work and uh, uh, the humans are uh, you know uh, uh, assigned to create you and strategic decision making related uh, tasks and not not the boring uh, data entry works then the overall business value delivered as an operating model once robots started working along with the humans and uh, new i mean this is uh, something interesting uh, new ge revenue generation opportunities uh, with the uh, revised or redefined operating model once the robots came into picture so th that's how we uh, uh, we built, uh, you know, uh, some of the use cases for Sage and non-Sage community, uh, and uh, brought in uh, a value add. Next slide, please. I think Thank that's it, so uh, Dimitri. <laughs> that's it. Okay, so I would ask all panelists to go to turn on the cameras, um, and before we start our probably shortened this time the, the chat part. I want to address the questions that were coming into Q&A part, and then we can take a look at questions in the chat. So on the Q&A part, so the first question was whether this is related to accounting or limited to accounting. No, by no means. But the topic of our community event is accounting. Electronic, for example, has probably the biggest client base in banking, in insurance, in manufacturing, and um, logistics. That's probably the most current use cases we have. But accounting is catching up. So I think that this early next year, our accounting client base will be maybe one of top three industries we work with. So uh, second question, um, what does a shareable account for both users mean? And can you talk a bit more about 400 per month plan details? So that's as simple as that. You pay price for an account that could be used by one developer or more than one, but only one at a time. That developer can build bots. Once they build, they can be run anywhere at, at any computer in attended or an attended fashion at no cost. And we have orchestrator when you have a lot of bots and you want to do the maintenance, you likely will go with orchestrator or where you want to connect something extra with your API. But the core is the studio and it's 400 a month. So um, you are, I'm a current accountant major and I'm wait, wanting to know what I might want to specialize in. I was thinking about audit, but with the studies on automation taking over those positions, I'm concerned if I take this route. That's a great question. I think the future of, of all professions is redefined now by automation, by cognitive automation, intelligent automation. It doesn't mean that certain paths are less attractive or more attractive. It probably means that you need to think about what will be the biggest value add of an auditor or someone else 
in the future, given that a lot of manual tests will go away. Uh, I think that analysis, being subject matter expert, being thought leader in your space, being an advisor to client would be great in any case, in any, in any kind of uh, profession. Relationship cannot be automated. And I think professional services are relationship-based business in the end of the day. So for complicated activities such as global cost allocations, transfer pricing, and, and SSE done in ERP systems, what's a typical starting point? So the starting point, as I would, I would try to explain it as simple as that, let's say you have an instruction for a process, you pretty much draw a process on the whiteboard. And then you, you take a look at that and pick up one part when there is no decision making required. Let's take off the decision making away. When you exactly know in the process what to do next, for example, you have Excel table and you need to enter data in ERP systems, or you need to take the data from ERP to Excel for an analysis. You pick up that part and you automate it, and it's your first macro. Now, every time someone who executes the process goes into that, they use the macro instead of using their um, manual um, time. As a result, they see the benefit and their mind starts to think, okay, now maybe I need to change the process or maybe I just expand the automation chain and it becomes a bigger bot. But as I mentioned before, start small, pick up the parts that are easy to build um, and, um, and focus on them. So audit tax services, I am looking at Dmitry's question. It is obvious that the audit and tax services of accounting firms would be the biggest beneficiaries of RPA. But what are, you, are your views on how RPA can impact the advisory business of accounting firms? I think honestly, and you know, it's not an original idea, I came from before, I've seen some of that already happening, that speed and agility of delivery opens new ways of, like new ways of serving clients. Let's take it audit. What if I can do things in an internal audit much, much quicker, then you can essentially transition to something that could be a continuous audit, which essentially is an advisory service. And in this continuous audit, instead of being reactive in the end of the year, it can be proactive during the year, identifying all the things that need to be fixed by December 31st. So the audit goes very quick next year. Um, that's an advisory service. So I think that you, know, you work with a lot of data, if you can process that quickly and you can do some meaningful work quickly, then it's completely new types of advisory services. You just need to think how you capitalize on the insights or data you transformed, got, processed with RPA. Then I have a question on how can help RPA to student? I'm doing MBA, how this helped to me. If you go into consulting or big four space, definitely I would say that it's time to study. It's time to study use cases. It's time to kind of get hands on the technology. You would be much valuable candidate on the market. Doesn't matter where in professional services you go to. Um, if you are not even capable to automate, but at least you have the understanding of how that can make your work more beneficiary. We, for example, have incoming flow of data scientists across the whole world who realize that on the electronic, they can easier get their data together to process, that they can become much more efficient employees using our tool. So they got to the point because they understood what RPA is. So you need to form the same understanding. Can you give us a real example of implementation of RPA in the ERP system? where it was very much helpful and meaningful, something like hand in large processes. Um, it's a case study on our website, uh, Electrolux, it's not an accounting firm, but uh, essentially they're managing their logistic fleet, uh, connecting the dots between ERP system and Excel spreadsheets where the scheduling happens. It's manual process, very slow. I mean, seems to be okay, but when you compare it to automation, very slow. The major difference comes there not from kind of one-on-one -on -one time savings, but from increased fleet utilization. So pretty much the bot knows all the scheduling rules that the manager would know and just quickly does the data transfer between systems that allows to schedule things more efficiently. So uh, what about unattended bots? Uh, unattended bots are great. They provide a lot of savings. Uh, we can do unattended bots. Our clients build unattended bots. It's just not something we advise you to start with, to start from. So quickly go through the chat. So I think that some of the questions here are already answered. Um, if you have any questions on electronic business, I think we can just skip it and you know reach out to my colleague, George, he put his email address in chat. Um, 
trial period yeah that, that depends so if, if it's a program that has certain timeline probably not in general yes do you have to buy a studio for a year with months to months uh, i will delegate to answer, answer that to george once you connect it really depends on on the scale so what else is here the question is about how does it work is it covered under your monthly plan i don't understand the question exactly is it coming on the monthly plan? Okay, again, George would be a great point of contact to follow up. And let me just, you know, turn on the fire set chat mode. Um, we still have a lot of you with us. I think we came to the top of the hour, but we can probably continue if our speakers can stay on the line. Uh, we will record it and share the recording with you anyway. So what we have one question and answered. Yep, got it. So uh, Raphael, I'm ask you a question about to provide the real use case example. Uh, I wanted to ask you what about the bot that we built together, and uh, what was the destiny of that bot? I think it's an interesting story. Oh yeah, that's a, that was a you know we wanted to really start out to build a simple bot. You know that uh, an area that because uh, that's really the concept of building bots. There's so many different types of bots that have been built out. You know coming from building a bot to do zero dollar extensions, um, helping with 1040s, um, bots that have, there, there's some complicated bots that I've seen where it's, uh, and even, even Dave's done some of these where it's putting data into document management. So it can be very complicated, but we wanted to really start out with a simple bot within Sage Business Cloud Accounting and uh, Electronic RPA. So one was really, and actually was part of the gift that you had brought up, which was onboarding client chart of accounts. So when you have new clients, depending on the industry, they're going to have, you know, a kind of a set different type of chart of accounts. And so what we wanted to do is be, have a bot be able to just clean up the existing standard chart of accounts out of the box and then use that bot from an, uh, from an actual templated file for a specific industry, bring in those particular types of uh, chart of accounts into, into a client's system, uh, specifically the, the, Sage Business Cloud Accounting. What eventually that happened is, you know, a lot of people were really excited about that, wanted to use that to the point where our product development teams, our directors and our VPs um, ended up putting that functionality inside of the product itself to be able to not only just do importing of those different types of chart of account templates, but also do a cleanup at the same time. So, you know, those are some, those are kind of byproducts that really help the the evolving uh, pieces of of technology that are that are already out there from you know, the Sage Cloud Accounting to other products out there. So that that that's an additional uh, a valuable thing that can happen and come out of that. So that was something that uh, that happened with us with us. But to really what that idea was to spark and what what uh, Jason Stat CPA and the Accelerator community is doing. I think they have several hundred accounts in there. They're going to be building out these concepts and it, what really is going to be a beautiful thing is that there's going to be so many use cases valuable use cases that are going to be built out by this community that can be that can be easily deployable to all these other uh, types of firms out there that are dealing with the same type of use cases thank you so much uh, dave my question to you would be just again going back to practical bot examples could you please tell about your last project with electronic in accounting or outside of accounting space, what exactly does the bot do? Sure, uh, I would pick something outside of accounting because we have spoken a lot about accounting and the bot. So uh, this is a property management uh, uh, company based out of Canada. Uh, and we are, uh, I mean, they handle almost 900 to 1000 tenants a month and they receive uh, almost 1000 emails uh, uh, for the rental and utility bill payments. So what we did is we automated right from reading the email, extracting the data from the email and updating those details into CRM every month. So completely taking off the human aspect in this mundane and boring and you know, labor intensive work. So that's one process which we have automated. And looking at the, uh, looking at the success of this robot, uh, they are very keen on uh, uh, picking up other processes uh, in the, in the pipeline, which is uh, vendor onboarding, new tenant onboarding. So where it reads the uh, contract document between a vendor or a tenant and 
or the robot reads the contract document, extracts key information at vital places, and updates their CRM into, uh, I mean, CRM with a new vendor on a vendor or new tenant uh, onboarding. That's an, that's something which we are working uh, outside the accounting space. Yeah, sure. So I see very practical questions coming regarding sharing the cases, the architecture. Um, again, if you reach out to George or to any channel number website, we will be more than welcome to connect and actually to route your question in the right direction, maybe to connect with Dave directly. Uh, Dave, feel free to put your email address here in the chat as well. Um, I wanted to answer the question about unattended bots because I think it's uh, it's an interesting concept. So I explained how attended bot works. Attended bot is essentially a macron steroid. What an attended bot typically means. You create a virtual machine with all the software to use for uh, for your process. You pretty much create all credentials needed for a real employee to complete the the work, or you create set of credentials for a new digital employee. Let's say bot one. So that virtual machine works 24 seven in the background. And typically you put a trigger for the process to start executing. That could be incoming email. So the bot has Outlook, for example, or uses a API to connect to email server. Something triggers the process. Let's say email comes with specific PDF attachment. Two pages has invoice in the right top corner. You can create your own custom ways to check that. Then you create certain instructions for that bot to process that um, email. Where it's useful when you have a bulk process with a lot of data, you don't want to bother employees, you don't want employees to share the same machine with bot. We really know that the bot will process a lot of workload and you want that, work, that bot to work completely independently. So typically you designate a user called admin, they can see the status of all these unattended bots, they can see logs from all these bots, they can see if anything happened, um, and confirm that everything is okay. So unattended bots essentially think of them as digital workforce in the full sense of this word. Attended bots think of them as digital assistants, assistants to your employees so they can help them to, to execute things quicker without mistakes. That's probably the major difference. So architectural diagram I mentioned in the past. Um, you know, Dave, Raphael, any question you found interesting to address that I haven't from the chat? I see the question here on employee onboarding. Actually, employee onboarding is a big use case for RPA in any industry. We use it ourselves. For example, you, know, you have employee leaving your company or joining your company. You need to create dozens of accounts. You need to keep track of them and uh, provide access here and there to Slack, to other place. You can completely automate it and just tell the bot, what's your new employee name and email address? And the bot will register them automatically in all software, assign them the proper IT rights everywhere. It's very common use case. And uh, actually one of the most common use cases for, for RPA is employee onboarding. So the question is yes. <laughs> um, training manuals, SOP implementations. I would just say that any digital transformation as well that requires you transfer data, migrate the data from one place for another one is a big thing. Um, there was a really good question down here, actually. It's been a couple of times and it's an actual discussion I have quite a bit. How is electronic different than any other RPA leaders such as UI, Prism, Automation Anywhere? I can say something that you can, you can take it from here, but I, I've actually, when we at Sage, when we look to find the best solution for our um, for our customers, you know, and this is going to be eventually globally as well. But we were looking for something that would give them the ability to be in the realm of the no code, low code movement. So it's maintainable. It's easily easy for them to stand up, um, and it's not also the price point and the the education. You know, most of these other ones, if not all of them, are leaning towards enterprise. They're not looking towards anything that's relatable to small business. Um, when, even when you look at the quality of the products, you even look at uh, the, 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 what is it, the community edition that, that Electronic has, that is so 
commercially ready that you could even use that uh, as a stable product to for a proper proof of concept within your production before you moved into getting more uh, more commercial level access to to their higher levels of, of RPA bots. But you know these are things that we looked about quality, the attentiveness, the customer service, um, the education that's available at no cost through their electronic academy, um, and, and and it really breaks it down. It doesn't it doesn't uh, it empowers you to feel that you understand from a business process or a business automation specialist point of view. Uh, but again, also the maintenance and the uh, the ability to move bots between different environments that we need, you know, that's, those are all things you need to think about. Uh, and as well as the UX that you got, they just got number one UX uh, honors in the U S for a reason. You know, you want to have those, uh, those, those types of products available to you to, to really help you, um, to help you scale and to help you grow. So that I'll, I'll end with that. You can go ahead, Dimitri. That's a good question, actually, Profil. First of all, thank you so much. Um, as I mentioned before, for us, the core kind of vision and technology focus was make that automation much more accessible, specifically attended automation, which I think is where there's a big gap, even in large enterprises. And that's why we work with, you know, global 2000 companies are originally really developing solution more for smaller firms. Um, there's a great question on, there's so many trained developers for other platforms. We actually work with 25 relatively big partners globally. We work with, I think, big four now, all big four companies have trained uh, electronic developers. Um, there are 3000 people who actually got certified as developers. Maybe it's not, that big number globally, but believe me or not, that will be more than enough for any company now to start working with electronic. So there's a bunch of talent certified there. And uh, most of the people who got certified, who got training in electronic, started with electronic as their first platform and were able to, to get there. Many of them started with UiPath automation anywhere, and they liked that they were able to uh, very quickly switch to electronic. Um, because of our UX. We just tried, when we originally developed the solution, we tried to make the UX that good that anyone can start automating. We just don't oversell that to keep the satisfaction of our customers high. And that's why we rank number three among all our platforms on the customer satisfaction rating. Uh, it's G2 uh, provided that rating because we don't oversell that as everyone can use, but we made it really so easy that any company can use it. Okay, so I think it's time for us to wrap up. I greatly appreciate um, our speakers being here today with us. Raphael, thank you. Dave, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be on the same virtual stage with you. Um, big gratitude for everyone who came to, to listen today. I hope you learned something. I hope your understanding and uh, your readiness for the future went up. We will create a recording of this and share it today or tomorrow, depending on how quickly we process that. Unfortunately, there is no bot for that. So uh, stay tuned. You will get invited to the next next electronic uh, community event that will be in 2021. So wish you great holidays ahead. Uh, get in touch with George if you have any questions or you want to move forward with accounting pioneer program. That's this pioneer program is something I'm very excited for. I usually like to engage with companies who come there. So uh, good luck. Stay tuned. Big thank you. <laughs>